Hello everyone and welcome to our next tutorial. So today I'm going to talk about uh, chest x-ray portable, which is an alternative method of normal chest PA. And it's been always been challenging for technologists, especially uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, I felt that it would be useful to create this video. So let me begin with the indications, but uh, before we start, let me tell you that as a technologist and as a radiographer, uh, you should know and be aware of the indications of portable uh, X-ray and always bear them in mind. Believe me, I worked in uh, three different countries by now in two different hospitals and not all the doctors and physicians are aware of the disadvantages of portable X-ray. So it is your role, your responsibility to evaluate the a necessity of doing portable x-ray and avoid of doing them if possible for patient to come to the department and do a normal x-ray. Okay, so the first subgroup of patients are uh, those with cardiopulmonary signs and symptoms following surgery or trauma uh, when the normal PA and lateral x-ray cannot be performed. Then we have the patients with uh, life support devices, mostly patients in uh, critical care units. So these patients are uh, usually unstable and need to be monitoring continuously. So it's not possible to shift them to radiology department. Then uh, we have the patients who need uh, immediate assessment for pneumothorax, for instance, or post-operation patients which are not recovered yet from anesthesia and uh, need urgent x-rays and finally COVID-19 patients or even other contagious diseases which a uh, patient is isolated and should not be transported to the other departments of the hospital. All right so regarding the procedure first and foremost uh, there should be a request for the portal x-ray either verbally or written. Uh, it should indicate a summary of patient and uh, the necessity of uh, the examination. In the other words, uh, why they ask you to do it portable instead of a normal PA x-ray. Okay, and um, always ask a staff nurse or other personnel to assist you when uh, performing the portable x-ray, especially if the patient is, in, um, is not conscious or not stable or also uh, in most cases there are medical devices IV lines and tubes uh, uh, so you should take care of them while positioning the patient and uh, positioning the x-ray cassette patient as erect as possible uh, this is the first thing you should consider when visiting the patient uh, Evaluate his or uh, her condition and try to do the examination in upright position if it's possible. Um, I'll get back to this later uh, in the next slides as it's very important. And exposure at peak inspiration, this is a rule of thumb. So uh, this depends on patient cooperation, but if the patient is not conscious, uh, you can monitor the chest wall and uh, make the exposure as the ribs cage is rising. And finally, radiation protection is of great importance. So during portable examination, you have to protect yourself from radiation as, as well as uh, the other staff and other patients. Uh, many different shape of shields are available, uh, lead aprons, mobile, uh, lead barriers and walls and um, you may face different situations uh, like sometimes the nurse uh, should stand beside the patient or even uh, sometimes uh, the other patients are close to the x-ray source always keep in mind to be on the safe side two meter distance is essential and also enough all right then uh, let's start the main subject which is uh, positioning the way we perform the x-ray there are several ways to do the portable chest x-ray 
It highly depends on patient condition and cooperation. The first and most accurate way of doing chest x-ray is PA upright. But it's only feasible for, let's say, um, happy patients. I'm using this view particularly in a COVID department for COVID positive patients and also those who are suspected and cannot be transported to radiology department. You can use a cassette stand if available. If not, instruct the patient to hold the cassette, as you can see here in this picture, uh, with arms wrapped around the cassette while he is standing or a better sitting at the side of the table or bed. This is the best method of performing portable chest x-ray. You have all the advantages of a normal PHS, except there is no grid line. Uh, so cardiac silhouette is in true size, air fluid levels um, can be ruled out. Maximum expansion of the lungs while the diaphragm is at its uh, lowest position. However, as I mentioned, it needs uh, patient cooperation. Um, motion artifact risk will increase also and sometimes it's difficult to perform. The second method is IP upright or semi upright, which you can perform for almost all the patients. In this method, you have to slide the cassette behind the patient and make the patient as erect as possible. To do so, you can incline the patient's bed. It's possible for almost all the cases. The benefits of this method is uh, it's easy to perform. Air fluid level still can be ruled out. And also, uh, you still have the long expansion and diaphragm in its lowest position. The main disadvantage is that, uh, well, it's AP rather than PA, so you have cardiac shadow enlargement and uh, diagnostic accuracy is likely to be less than PA method. And finally, the AP supine position, which should be your last choice if the erect x-ray is not possible to conduct. So this is almost the same as the previous method, only the patient is uh, completely supine. And again, you need to slide the cassette behind the patient's chest. Usually this will require other staff assist. Also, uh, be mindful about uh, the patient IV lines, tubings, and uh, other medical devices. All right, then uh, let's review some important notes regarding the chest portable uh, positioning. As I mentioned earlier, have the patient as erect as possible. This helps prevent an engorgement of uh, pulmonary vessels and to allow gravity to depress the diaphragm. Supine x-rays are less preferred due to uh, shortened lung fields and magnified hearts and also air fluid levels uh, cannot be evaluated. So here we have two series of x-ray. Uh, we have two cases doing uh, same x-ray with different positioning, supine and erect. On the left side, you can notice uh, that the cardiac shadow is in its true size. Uh, the lung field, uh, you can see the expansion of the lung and also it's more accurate for diagnostic rather than uh, the right image, which is the supine. You can notice here the uh, cardiac shadow uh, enlargement, it's magnified. And also the diaphragm is not its, uh, on its lowest position. So on the other case, on the right side of the slide, uh, you can see that the patient uh, suffered from uh, pleural effusion on the right side, on the right lung. Uh, which is uh, easy to notice on the erect x-ray, but as you can see here on the supine x-ray, it's very hard to evaluate. Uh, we have only a, a slightly white shadow, um, uh, which can be noticed uh, by a comparison of the left side, but in case we have bilateral pleural effusion, it's not easy to notice. So. In this case, uh, especially uh, 
when the physician wants to rule out uh, the fluid in the lungs, uh, erect X-ray is preferred. And always check uh, with the staff nurses or physicians before moving any patients as any changes in position may affect their condition. And also be mindful of any lines and tubing or any other medical devices which is connected to patient and have assistance when doing so if the patient is unable to move by themselves. One of the challenges in portable chest x-ray is positioning the cassette. So to make sure that you're including the apex of the lungs the superior border of cassette should be at the level of C7, just above or at the level of the shoulders. And also put your hands on both sides of the patient's chest to make sure that the entire chest fits within the lateral borders of the cassette. As a general rule, the cassette is usually pre uh, placed crosswise or landscape as most patients' body habitus fits well and exposure factors. So most of the portable x-ray cassettes are uh, without grid lines. So in these cases, uh, you can use a medium kilo voltage of 70 to 80 for a normal adult patient with a short uh, milliamp per second of two, three, maximum four. So uh, now new technologies bring some uh, extra cassette uh, which include grid lines. So in these cases, you should increase the kilo voltage up to 100, 110, and the milliamp per second should be around four or five. And also while you're positioning the extra cassette, instruct the patient about the breathing technique that he or she should hold his breath at the second inspiration. But if the patient is not responsive, is not conscious, in case that the patient is intubated, uh, you can do the exposure by monitoring the rib case. So as the chest wall is rising, it means that the patient is inhalating the air. So you can make the exposure. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching our video. Please put us a comment if you have any suggestion regarding our videos and don't forget to like and subscribe us. Thanks again.